Hey Virgo, this is Kelly from House of Virgo. Welcome back to my channel. This is a channel for Virgos, Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. So if you're new, welcome. Please do hit like and subscribe. Do join in in the chat. Come on in and say hello to everyone. Please remember these messages are general. So they may or may not resonate for you. Just take what fits, leave the rest. If you want to become a member of my channel, just click the join button. You guys can sign up and get free readings with me every Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Okay. So do hit like, share, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that so much. It would help my channel to grow even more. And hello to everyone in the chat. All right, Virgo. Let's see what your love messages are. So two cards already flipped out here. Hand of cards, taking a chance, a risk, being strategic, options, not showing your hand, gambling. And also there's addiction here, codependency, obsession, possession, controlling. Someone has a block. And there's restraint. Okay, let's take a look here. What's going on? All right, and also passion, insane chemistry, like each other equally, and having fun. Hmm. Okay, Virgo. I feel like um, you've got something cooking. <laughs> You're cooking up a scheme or a plan of some sort right now, or will be in the month of, you know, following the rest of the month of May. Um, you're being strategic about something here, Virgo. You have some options. I think you're looking at some options. You're not seeing anything. I think you're um, in this position here where you're going to take a risk. Uh, you're going to take a chance on something. Or you're preparing yourself to do that, but you're kind of keeping that within, keeping this a little bit of a secret. You're not really divulging any information to another person or others. Um, there's a little bit of restraint, though. There's a block, and I feel like this is coming through in the form of an addiction or a codependency perhaps showing up in your life in some way. Okay. Um, somebody could be active in an addiction or recovering from an addiction. Um, you know, this is strange. I just want to see this hand of cards. Um, what are you not showing here? There's also, okay. Now this may or may not be you, but somebody here has a gambling addiction. That's what they're that's no, that's it straight up. Now either you know about this, you're aware of this, or you're not aware of this, and you will be made aware. Okay, this could be something within you, Virgo, that maybe you haven't noticed or something in somebody else okay if you know that somebody that you are connecting with or you are connecting with as a gambling addiction I mean this is just confirming it um, if you don't know you might get wind of this or come together somebody's very there's passion here I feel like somebody is um so what is what is passion can it be obsession it can be um uh, gambling addiction, you know, this is, you know, gambling is like taking a risk. This is not, gambling is more so, you know, there's a way to gamble and then there's a way not to gamble. Okay. Um, gambling can be a strategic way to um, have a, the outcome that you want if, if being strategic about it. And playing the game in some way. And then there's there's people who, who gamble who just throw their money away. They don't even know what they're doing. You know what I mean? They just they're trying to fulfill some kind of addiction. There might be an element um, where it's like on the line. I feel like somebody's like on the fence. Somebody's asking, do I have an actual gambling addiction or am I just strategically um, 
playing my cards. There's a question here. Either way, there's it's passion. There's passion involved in this, is what I feel. Like somebody is like gun ho about this type of thing. This this it, it feels like I like I said a gambling here, playing like oh, the hand of cards. You know. All right, give me just a second here because. See, it's interesting because the card that's on here is the Ace of Spades, which is the Ace of Swords. This is um, trying to overcome some type of conflict. And this is what I feel like is going on here. Somebody's trying to, there's a conflict. Somebody's conflicted in their mind and they're asking, okay? Um, even if it's not actual gambling, like rolling the dice, like actual card playing, there's something here where someone's questioning and saying, is it an addiction that I have? Is it codependency that I have? Uh, am, am I addicted to taking risks? Am I adrenaline junkie? That kind of stuff. Somebody here, either you or another person is questioning or is asking these questions of self. Okay. Um, that, that element here in this passion card with insane chemistry, this is like a chemical uh, rush. Someone gets a a chemical rush when they place their bets or when they take a risk okay now this could have something to do with a relationship as well um, you know am I risking everything to be in a relationship just so I can fulfill some kind of an, a gross need um, or am I being strategic about my investments in a particular relationship but either way there's passion surrounding all of this so i don't know if this is specifically a message for you virgo or for someone that you could be coming in contact with or already connected with but there's definitely i'm picking up someone is um asking themselves this question questioning themselves but let's get further into this reading and see what's going on here because I mean it is a love reading so I do feel like it, it could have something to do with a relationship or just something with self-awareness relationship with self you know am, am I am I making this move or this next move because it's I'm being strategic and this is something that I know um, I'm investing in and I know that it's it's gonna I know what the numbers are gonna be I know what the statistics the outcome and all that or am I just risking foolishly and not being cautionary am I just am I just doing this because I'm trying to fulfill some gross need that I have that must be a desire that must be satisfied okay all right <laughs> weird but it, it is what it is here all right let's take a look and see what the rest of these messages are for you okay so queen of swords oh eight of swords oh somebody's thinking wow look at all the sword energy so somebody here is getting um real honest themselves about self-sabotage or about how they've imprisoned themselves in, um, or how they've made themselves imprisoned by their own thoughts in their mind. Um, am I causing my own anxieties? Am I the one who, because we have the Eight of Swords, Seven of Pentacles, which is stop and think for a minute, and then the Nine of Swords. Am I the one, am I being too critical? Am I being too harsh of myself? Am I the one who's creating the stress and anxiety? within me or is it coming or is it external is it coming from external in in towards me is somebody causing anxiety in my life or am i doing it this is like i said questioning the queen of swords is someone who's like totally honest and the queen of swords can represent virgo okay so Either you're saying this to yourself or someone, maybe you said it to somebody else and they're questioning this, they're asking themselves, um, they're looking at themselves. That seven of pentacles is kind of like delaying, trying to delay some stress and anxiety, trying to sort something out, getting real with themselves about this eight of swords, about, you know, am I the one that's self-sabotaging? Am I the one that's causing my own problems? 
okay? So somebody's questioning their actions. Questioning their actions. Oh, did the light go out? Questioning their actions in, in how like, um, um, actually reversing, I'm hearing, reversing. Looking at their actions and then going back to their own thoughts that led them in a particular direction, okay? Because this is all thought energy and stopping and pausing. That Seven of Pentacles is a pausing energy, okay? So either you were connected with an air sign or another Virgo, um, and they're going through this, or it was something that maybe you said. I feel like for some, a relationship may have fallen apart in the past because of somebody's gambling addiction. Um, and when I say gambling, like I said, yeah, they could be, you know, playing poker every night, and losing all the money or just um, gambling in that they are, are they, because the word addiction is there, it makes me feel like somebody was not being strategic in their, their, their dealings with another person. They were more codependent. They had a need that needed to be satisfied. Okay, so that's very strange. The messages that are coming out are very strange right now. Yep, look at that. Karma, judgment. This is, you know, a wake-up call. Somebody's having a wake-up call, really, about their behavior in a relationship with somebody else. Okay? Um, somebody might have been hiding something. A secret addiction of some sort not showing their hand they might have been possessive controlling uh, somebody has a block which is the eight of swords there okay there was restraint and I feel like that energy is still playing out but in context of the other cards it seems like somebody here is like actually taking a look at this and reconciling that they sabotaged by their own thoughts and behaviors a particular relationship. So coming to terms with this. Okay, Eight of Pentacles. Um, so I feel like There was a lack of focus. Somebody was, was distracted by a third party, okay? And so when I say third party, that could be person, place, or thing, right? Um, somebody was distracted by something else that took over in their life and prevented them from being in a healthy kind of a relationship. There was another influence. Could have been some type of an addiction whether it's gambling or whatever else it might have been there was i always i always like to say like if you're in a relationship with someone who's addicted to a, a substance or something else then you're in kind of a third party affair you're kind of like um you you then become the side piece to their addiction because like if somebody has an alcohol problem or is an alcoholic their first love is going to be the alcohol and then their second love is going to be you right because the addiction within them needs to be fed first. So however that might resonate for you, um, somebody might have been very strategic in making sure they got their needs met first through um, their addiction fed first before being in a healthy relationship. And if they weren't able to feed that addiction, um, they weren't able to have a healthy relationship. Now, again, these, could, these roles could be reversed but there's definitely an energy of somebody coming in here and taking a look that what they needed to do was get rid of that ad addiction and be consistent with their effort day after day after day polishing enjoying it working on it cultivating um, creating a stable 
partnership because you see all those pentacles you see how they're all one after the other after the other after the other that's like watering your plant every single day a little bit of water each day makes the flowers grow you know so there's definitely a wake up energy happening here for somebody you might have said something to this person um, that you can't be in a re love relationship with someone who's you know on is chasing after chasing waterfalls chasing after these addictions um, you might have said that to them and they're that's resonating within them pretty hard um, I'm not sh exactly sure why your person might have said it's not an addiction it's an, it's a passion it's just a passion <laughs> So that's the question. Is it which one is it? Is it an, was it an actual addiction or or was it just a passion? Is somebody rationalizing um, by saying, "Oh, I'm just having fun. It's not serious. You know, it makes me feel good. Um, this addiction enjoys me, and I enjoy it. <laughs> so it's a passion. Oh, it's just a hobby." Somebody might have said, "It's not that serious," but I feel like they were, you know holding back and not reveal not showing their hand not not revealing the truth and the truth um they might not even want it to accept the truth so they convince themselves that it wasn't anything more than a passion or a hobby whatever it is it could have just been like so addicted to like i don't know building train sets that that they would never come out of the basement <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> I don't know where I'm getting that from. I'm just seeing this image. Just um, always down in that basement working on them damn trains. Never wanted to go out for dinner. Never wanted to, you know, just do anything that I wanted to do. Somebody was just so absorbed, whatever it is, in their quote-unquote hobby or their passions that they have time for the relationship. They couldn't devote, devote time. It's obsession their possessions things like that so i feel like somebody here is i don't know i don't know if you said something to somebody in the past or you're saying it to or you will be saying it to them in may um you may be telling them you know you're this thing is sabotaging this relationship and i'm it's um it's like i i try to take pause and hear what you're saying but I, i'm so stressed out and i think i i just need to let it go i keep putting in the effort and, and the effort's not getting reciprocated you know, this energy could be playing out later, like I said, or it's already occurring now, or it has occurred. Somebody's definitely, they keep hearing that. They keep hearing it, or they will keep hearing it in, in the back of their head. Somebody, the Queen of Swords, you'll, feel, you'll always feel called out by the Queen of Swords, male or female energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. They'll always call you out. They they don't hold back. They, they just right to the truth you know and sometimes it can be very harsh queen of swords you know i mean total honesty some people would rather be lied to i mean that's just the truth some people are like no i don't want to hear the truth just lie to me yeah it's the icing on the cake that makes it the you know it's like the the butter it just goes down smoother when you just, just please keep lying to me like that song i was talking about yesterday love the way you lie you know um but not the Queen of Swords. No, no, no. She can have a tendency to be cold and rigid, you know? And sometimes her, and I say her because she's queen here. It could be male as well. But sometimes his or her um, uh, truth can seem unkind, but it's it might be a form of tough love or it's just straight up honesty. That could be you giving that to somebody and you know virgo and you always want to help people but sometimes you know there's some virgos that <laughs> diplomacy and speech goes by the wayside and some virgos are just straight to the point they go right for the jugular they're not intending to hurt but they do. some virgos just don't see the point in dancing or beating around the bush let's just go right to the source you know so somebody here is definitely i feel they got that voice running in the back of their mind, um, your voice or something that you might have said to them or something another person might have said to them. It may not have been you. Somebody else might be saying something to them. It could be for some of you, you, you might have had a past relationship with this person and the relationship might have fallen apart because of 
their passion or hobby or addiction or whatever it is and they got involved with somebody else and now the other person said yo saying the same thing to them and now they're like okay no wait there might be an issue here they might have deflected in the past when you said it because it was the first time maybe they heard it and they just maybe thought you were being naggy or nitpicky but now they're hearing it again it could come be coming from a family member or a friend as well if it's if it's you know but it's that tape now starts replaying and even if they're on their own which it seems like somebody is there's an energy here of um i feel somebody is like on their own because the queen of swords is often divorced or single or widowed it doesn't have a, doesn't have a partner most of the time doesn't have a partner than does and this person i feel like is on their own and and this stuff is resonating all right let me see okay i feel like this is kind of similar to yesterday's reading where somebody was gaining balance gaining traction so the queen of swords seems like said to somebody or says to somebody the only time you seem balanced or happy or um calm is when you have another money opportunity or the money's coming in okay or you're being gifted that thing that is going to feed your addiction in other words it feels like whoever this person is was imbalanced when the opportunities were not there to have their addiction fed and so they sought it out and then when they would get it and then they would be in you know everything then in moderation they'd be back to and and maybe would even say um okay somebody told this queen of swords told somebody as soon as you get that that thing that you need then you're calm and you're balanced and then i'm afraid that when you get calm and balanced and then the money runs out you're going to be or the the source the source that you need runs out then you're going to be disconnected again or you're going to be imbalanced again um the queen of swords has also said to somebody i've given and given and given to try to keep things moderated between us and tempered um but somebody was being very codependent um somebody was being very, very codependent in a relationship so what that means is basically what that means is there's two people one of them has an addiction and the other one is codependent which means they're dependent on their person and also who is dependent who is co-addicted who is dependent on their addiction okay that's what codependency means it really doesn't fall into any other category other than addiction okay you just can't be codependent by yourself um and it's basically like a, a third party kind of situation so somebody here the queen of swords feels like um she was trying to not only feed one mouth but two two mouths she was trying to give energy to the partner and also had to feed the addiction as well in order for the partner to be happy so giving whatever the partner needed in order for them to be sustainable to have the relationship again we're turning into another psychological reading here enough <laughs> i mean it's just it's too much okay it's too much all right so somebody is 100 percent coming to terms with okay wait maybe the queen of swords was right maybe the queen of swords was right maybe i do have an addiction and i've just been masking it as a hobby or a passion maybe i need to stop pause step back take a look at this see how it's causing anxiety in the relationship see how i'm really not being consistent and putting in the effort in this connection so this is all you know that judgment card that karma card is like what comes around goes around okay um and somebody here is it feels like getting a job a job that's like consistent like every day somebody needed to do that 
I don't know what that means. Um, going to work and earning an honest day's pay every day. Maybe somebody was without a job or wasn't working or was just borrowing money or taking money all the time or living off the fat of the land, other people's lands, <laughs> you know, being kind of like a leech or um, a squatter in some ways, okay? So <laughs> maybe living off of parents or taking from parents or exes or things like that and just kind of like never having their own... Um, and their own employment of some sort you know it's like they were employing others <laughs> or being employed by other people I, am I making sense it's just basically like not being a grown up not going and just get a job and go to work every day and pay the bills normal like everybody else does and you know put money away and have savings and do the 401k and, and, and live a, a clean, uh, normal, everyday life and stop trying to get money from people all the time or, or trying to get what you need from other people, all like borrowing from Peter to pay Paul and all that kind of energy. This craziness. So yeah, somebody's taking a look at that. Whatever it is, whatever was said to another person about their behavior, their addictions, their passions, their hobbies, how it's affecting the relationship, whatever was going on, it's like, boom, somebody's standing here with the Seven of Pentacles, like, I think, I think the Queen of Swords was right. I think the Queen of Swords was right. I think I have a problem. And the Queen of Swords is also getting honest with herself about her own codependency in this relationship and how she may have been enabling or um, trying to, you know, keep all four pillars of the relationship standing up when that takes two people to contribute to that. Not One person should not bear the brunt of, of all the weight of trying to hold a relationship up while somebody else is just, you know, coming in and just leaning up against the pillar not doing any work <laughs> all right very well let me see okay so there's the page of swords and okay five of pentacles well the five of pentacles straight out the gate is poverty okay this is um financial loss Um, truth page of swords this is truth right I feel like um, somebody is coming to the truth here that um, they're broke they have nothing they have financial loss they are in a very bad state right now or going into May they do not have the funds or the money to pay for anything they've i feel like somebody here has lost everything okay a lot of swords and pentacle energy i have to tell you the minor arcana it's page i mean i'm sorry it's swords and pentacles and the major is temperance balance and judgment somebody realizing they need to moderate they need to get balanced. They need to balance their, their budget and their checkbook. Self-control, self-moderation. Okay. Um, I feel like there's some truth. Somebody's going to tell you. They have nothing. Are they going to ask you for help? I don't know. We'll have to see. But there's some type of communication coming to you in the month here of May. Um where you know it's desolate there there's the only money hanging out off the tree is like five cents <laughs> that's all they got left they got five cents to their name that's it that's what's coming in here broke busted and disgusted because of their addiction because they didn't play their hands right they've lost they're losing or they're even if even if they they did um I don't know if there's some kind of like recession or stock market crash, a global thing that's coming in, but somebody here 
I'm going to tell you they have nothing left. Okay. Um, wow. The Fool and the King of Pentacles. Okay, straight off the back, the bat. This feels like a financial love reading. Um, they're going to tell you that um, they were careless with their investments. You know, they took risks with their money. They took risks with their investments. Okay, because the King of Pentacles, at the end of the day, is a wise investor, a solid, practical leader, all about the money, the material, the physical things. And the fool, that's taking a risk, okay? The fool is uh, taking a chance. And this person took some kind of financial, made a financial decision, took a risk, and now they have nothing. Now they're broke. Um, they were not wise in the decision that they've made. So like I said, these rules could be reversed, but it could also be, um, it doesn't have to be a love reading. It could also be someone that, um, this could be a work partnership, a colleague, a friend. You know, you, you, you know your story better than I do, but I'm just delivering these messages here. So I wish I could tell you that there, there's love and all, and all that stuff, but I, I'm not getting any cups thus far. So I kind of feel like this, um, even though it's a love reading, this is more about the, the everyday workings of some type of a relationship um, as far as like, you know, the energies that I'm picking up. Some, you know, I'm, I'm, when I call for a love reading, it's not always going to be, oh, this person's so crazy in love with you and every single day and then you're all like, well, nothing's happening. Well, you know what? It's kind of, I mean, there's some times where I'll, I'll see some tarot readers and every single reading, every single reading is very much like a cookie cutter kind of reading where this person loves you, this person loved, they want to make it work, they want to make it work. And sometimes those readings do come out. Um, but other times it's like other stuff's going on in life, you know what I mean? Other stuff's going on in life. And especially I feel like with the way of the world at this time, where inflation's so high and gas prices and people are not able to afford just a loaf of bread and there's stuff going on in the stock market and people are still struggling to find work or they're, you know, overworked and the money's tight. Some stuff's going on here with someone that you're connected to or with you. And there's, a, there's an energy, there's a rethink happening here. I feel like somebody here is rethinking their strategy. Um, that perhaps whatever they were investing in or whatever they got caught up in, you know, money, any kind of an addiction that made the, broke the bank. There's an energy of um, coming to terms with this, okay? And has indirectly affected the relationship for sure. Okay. Wow. There you go. The devil card. And always the devil, addiction, greed, envy, materialism, obsession, and even sexual lust. Oh, and the tower. You just cannot with this. Like, I feel like this story is just playing out. So, uh, yeah, somebody's, this addiction crashing down big time. Violent upheaval. Somebody's, listen... I don't know who this reading is for, and I'm really sorry if you're going through something like this. It's been difficult for you. I hate that little, it's like a little UFO on my cards there. Like, let me fix this. <laughs> I'm going to find another way to hold these up for you so you can see it. But somebody's life is like hitting the, the shit. It's the shit storm here. Look at this. This person's losing everything because of their addictions. They're losing their home. Um, they've lost money due to... Sorry. They've lost money maybe due to some... I can't with this. I don't know why the light's like that. It's just annoying. Um, they've lost money due to... Point blank period. They've lost money due to like... Um, maybe some fires or catastrophe. Um, the house is burning down the house. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. Their addictions have caused, or their, their passion, if they want to call it, 
has uh, caused nothing but turmoil and destruction, disgrace, upheaval, violence. This person, they've, they were destroyed by this devil energy. And I feel like that's coming later. In the beginning here, as it starts, this person is, you know, hearing what the Queen of Swords has said, or it's replaying in their head. They're pausing, they're thinking, they're reflecting on the anxiety and stress in their life because of this, and not being transparent and open, not only with themselves, but with somebody else. And now everything comes crashing down. Like I said, poverty, taking financial risks that, you know, in the beginning looked lucrative and looked like something that was going to pan out and thinking at the time it was a wise investment. No, it wasn't. And they're going to tell you that they're they're broke. They have nothing. They don't might not even have a cot to, to lay, sleep on or a pot to piss in. They don't have anything. They have nothing left. Are they going to come asking you for money or asking you for help? Let's take a look. I mean, they're, they're definitely going to come in and tell you, you were right. I lost everything. But now what? Hmm. Well, I feel like this this person um, is going to come in, is showing up now as, you know, the King of Wands. I feel like this person is, is definitely going to say they're defeated, they're done, they've hit rock bottom. Um, they have a newfound confidence. Um, I don't know how they're getting from, I mean, I think if like I lost everything, I'd be pretty freaking devastated, but it seems like this person is going to recover from this pretty quickly. Um, they're definitely going to try to recover this relationship here with you in some way after hitting rock bottom. Ten of Swords. Um, complete and painful shock to the system. Okay, um, they're coming in with this confidence here. Uh, there's definitely some type of um, connection, and partnership. They want to still try to engage, or they will want to still try to engage in with you. But I feel an energy of skepticism, um, and I'm not sure why, because I feel. I, Maybe it's because after all this energy falling apart, why is this person coming in so confidently after being so defeated? You know, um, because maybe they're finally released from this addiction. Could be. Um, but why? Where is this energy coming that I'm feeling like, oh, I don't know, that's kind of strange to me. Because usually when someone's like, hit rock bottom they're, they're they're not looking so good they're definitely not all shined up and trimmed and cleaned and confident and courageous and bold and charming um okay eight of pentacles all right virgo look this is what i'm this is what i'm feeling here um they're definitely this person is gonna kind of they're going to come to you with this energy of like, yeah, everything fell, fell apart, but I'm good. I look good. I'm fine. I'm not going to, this person is not going to come to you showing signs of desolation and um, a feeling, <laughs> I can't with this card, Vlad, um, a feeling of uh, looking down and out. They're, they're going to come to you in complete opposite way. Like, it's pride. And that's fire energy, Sagittarius, Leo, and Aries. Um, they're not going to let their pride um, 
they're they're going to let their pride go before them is what I'm saying. Um, they're not going to come in with. It, there's an energy of like sh maybe some shame, but they don't want you to see that, even though they've hit rock bottom. I do feel like. Why is this page of pentacles here? Okay. Oh gosh. Okay, so they're going to tell you that. Um, yeah, there's definitely, you know, hey, I've, I've, I've lost everything and I'm starting over. Um, I have some employment opportunities coming up. Um, they're going to come in showing themselves as reliable and hardworking and um, doing things by the book now, okay, which is the Hierophant, doing things by the book, um, following the rules, the, the law and order, okay, which is 100% the, hier the Hierophant, um, doing, uh, they're conforming, they're not rebelling anymore, um, and they want to, they want to talk to you about this, they want to tell you that they've basically straightened, their, their, they've realized, they've come, they've had a very strong tower moment, they've had a very strong lesson, and they want to tell you that, you know, uh, I'm better. I'm doing things better. I, I've straightened myself out. You know, I got a job, or I'm working in a corporation, and you know, I'm a CEO, or you know, I, I've put this whole addiction thing behind me. You know, and um, you know, if it's a romantic partnership, you know, they want to try to re-engage this, or try to engage, or have this with you. For some of you, this may not be a past person. This could be somebody you could be meeting. This opportunity comes in, and um, they do come in and tell you that they were struggling with an addiction in the past. They had a relationship that fell apart because of that, um, and they've they've rebuilt their lives. And you know they're they're in a good, steady, stable, secure situation now. Uh, for some of you, that is the story. That is the message that you don't even know who this is. They may come into your life, and you'll know by um, they'll tell their story to you. You know that they're balanced and um, that that they had a rough time of it. Um, you either you do know them or you don't. But whatever was going on in their past, they've sorted it out now and they're they're back to being more stable and structured here right so the two of cups is an energy of like connecting with someone on a romantic partnership level or even just an intimate personal friendship okay wow i didn't expect that five of wands and the seven of swords okay Somebody here playing games, okay, playing games, being deceitful, playing deceitful games. Ding dong ditch, little ding dong ditch. Okay, what does that mean? Is this person coming in and are they lying to, to Virgo? Are they coming in and putting on the, um, the representative and making it seem as if they got it everything together, but is this person conning, trying to con Virgo? The drama. Yeah, Virgo. I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but this person, addiction is hard to overcome. You really do learn how to be a player. You really do, do learn how to shuffle those cards to get what you want. And, um... I feel like this person, whether this is somebody new or someone from your past coming back in, I would be very mindful of lip service. I would be very mindful of someone who's coming in, trying to connect with you and say to you um, that they've overcome everything. Like you can't just go on somebody's words, whether they're new or someone, a return from the past with that reconciliation card here. Um, because a magician is here, and that's a cur card of, you know, that, that energy is somebody who's like a magician, you know, magic tricks, you know, that's that Chris Angel energy where everybody believes it, but it's a trick, it's not real, 
but it looks so real and it seems so real and you know it's like this person how do they do that what's going on it's just you know um i don't think that's the case i, I even though the magician's intentions are good here he's still intending to trick <laughs> I mean, a lot of people who look at the magician as like, oh, it's manifestation, therefore it must be good. No, not necessarily, because we're talking in terms of manifesting you back into their life using tricks and magic. Um, no, that's not good. That's manipulation. You know, it's one thing if you're going to manipulate your hair with a hairbrush in the morning before you leave for work. <laughs> but trying to manipulate a person, that's not good. And I kind of feel like this is that energy playing out there here. Whether this is a friend, a colleague, a lover, um, a family member, you know, what is their intention here? What are they trying to trick? What are they trying to get here? These games, um, there's some witty, witty deceit, witty deception, competition, um, rivalry sport oh oh sport betting is it sport betting oh my goodness <laughs> they did I, I don't know where that would relate here but i'm just hearing i'm hearing sport betting they've traded their Uh, they started with one thing and they've traded and so now they're not doing that anymore you got to ask questions they might say okay well i'm not i'm not flipping a, i'm not flipping aces and you know um uh full houses anymore but now i'm um i'm betting i'm sports betting you're still betting you're still gambling so what the you know like if you have a gambling addiction <laughs> And you're trying to get a need met, and you, all you do is you switch hands. You're still in your addiction. Doesn't matter if you switch. That's like saying, okay, well, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm going on a diet, so I'm no longer going to eat chocolate cake. So now I'm going to eat sugar free cake. Yep. Yeah, so addiction's a mindset. You know what I mean? It's like a mindset. Where's your mindset? I, I don't know what's going on here, but <laughs> okay, let me see. I feel like the purpose, like this person, I almost kind of feel bad for them because that's a hard thing to have to deal with. And I feel like whoever this person is, or if it's you, you know, there's one thing about self-awareness and hitting rock bottom, but just hitting rock bottom, sometimes that wasn't the bottom. Sometimes there's like three more floors below that that need to be hit. Because what could feel like hitting rock bottom on the, four, the fifth floor, um, which might be pretty painful, actually sometimes not painful enough for people, and sometimes they need to hit the basement floor, you know? So one man's rock bottom is not every man's actual rock bottom. You know what I mean? How am I saying that? Like some people need to actually hit the basement floor you know, um, cause they might have some reservations or still like, okay, well, it wasn't that bad. So I guess I'm all right. And I think I can handle this. And then they get back up, brush off their pants and then they go back out there and then they just switch their, their game. They just, they just switch their hands, switch the cards around. Um, so what is this person's purpose to get from Virgo here? Oh, Virgo. This person is looking for validation. Um, I don't think they're going to try to take money from you. I don't think Virgo's stupid like that. I don't think Virgo's going to, excuse me, hand over their, their, their ATM card. I, don't, I just don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, not this Virgo, whoever you are listening, I don't see you doing that. I feel like this person's going to come in and try to get validation from you. It's such a weird psychosis because they're not going to tell you that they're switching their addictions. They're coming in for appreciation because they want to know that you're still going to be their friend or be there for them in a romantic partnership, even if they screw up again. So they're kind of coming in like with this burden, heavy burden, but I feel like this person
they want you to take charge <laughs> of um, soothing their ego or making them so it's kind of like if this person's intention was to kick a car tire um, and they need validation or permission to do that they'll come to you and they'll ask you if it's okay if they break the branch off the tree and if you say yes they'll interpret that that you're saying yes it's okay if they kick the car tire does that make sense it's a weird kind of validation because they know if they ask if they kick the car tire if they ask you if that's okay well that's the thing they did before and you were like no it's not okay because it destroyed everything you destroyed the car then obviously asking you that that you're going to say no so in their mind yeah they're going to kick the car tire but they want to know well is it okay if i just break the tree branch and if you say yes then that message that they're getting from you is that you just can't do this one thing but everything else you can do is okay at least that's how they're kind of rationalizing it in their mind so uh you have to be no on all fronts all across the board you know so you kind of have to be like with this person you know it's not okay for you to kick the car tire it's not okay for you to break the branches off the tree it's not okay for you to punch a hole in the wall these are all destructive behaviors and these are not okay with me but you have to be discerning and understand that when this person's coming in you got to say what is exactly you're seeking from me um, permission to destroy yourself no it's not okay with me because it destroys me too when you do that this reading was way 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 deep way to the point way deep and way to the point um where am i going now it's already been almost an hour with this reading Let's just take a look at you, Virgo, and see what some interesting stuff could be coming up for you. Okay. This feels like um, Spirit was trying to tell you, just guard yourself. Guard, protect yourself from relationships with people who are active in addictions and protect yourself from any addictions you might be active in um and also kind of like if you have any addictions that you're active in yourself you know work on trying to overcome them in some way okay i don't really know how um maybe get some support or some help okay you've got the king authority and diplomacy all right And the maiden, a new relationship blossoms. Okay, some of you are definitely, there's going to be um, a new relationship with someone who I feel, um, hmm, I'm getting that word strategic again. So I do feel like there's a relationship. Yeah, it's this. For some of you, it could be somebody new um, coming in who is... I'm feeling like in military or someone CEO or uh, a father figure type that I see you getting into a relationship with in the month of May. And for others, it could be this person that, um, you know, comes back and is trying to have their way again. You, you may, some of you listen, you may en entertain it and get back into a relationship with this person, but just have different set of healthy boundaries with them. You know, you may not give up on the relationship fully um, and just say, you know what, I'm not going to give up on this fully, but I am going to cha change my boundaries and, and make uh, more healthier choices and healthier boundaries with this person. Um, some of you might be married to this person and you're in separation and then, you know, you're going to resume the marriage, but in a completely different way. You know, some of you might give this person another chance to prove themselves. And, you know, and that's why I was saying they may be trying to kind of manipulate you in some way so they can try to keep their addiction fed. But some of you might just be like, I'll tell you what, 
we're going to get back together. I'm not getting into any financial contracts with you this time. Uh, you have yours and I have mine. And um, you're going to find other ways to let them sort themselves out without you being pulled down with the ship. <laughs> okay, I think my light went out again. Okay, yep, you've got a barrier. So the gate, you've got a gate up here, right? So you're being very selective and very careful. Um, your barriers and your... I'm, pi I'm picking up the Nine of Wands energy with that card. Okay, so keeping and maintaining your healthy boundaries and being very persistent with that going forward in new relationships, past relationships. Be meticulous and patient. Okay, and you have the green men. The forces of nature favor you. Okay, so I feel like they're saying here with the green man is that there's um, a cycle. Something is cycling again. That's what I'm hearing. Something is cycling. Here's winds of change again on the bottom of the deck. So there's something cycling, changing here. You're going through, um, for some of you, a new, a new pattern and cycle with a past person. And for some of you, you've got a new beginning where you've learned from the past. You're mis meet meeting somebody and you're getting yourself in a position of um, handling this particular uh, new relationships differently, which, you know, I like. I think that's great. Um, I'm not going to do an extended on this because I just don't really feel like it's called for. Um, maybe tomorrow. I'll have to see how that plays out. Let me get... I'm going to skip all the other cards and just get right into, I don't want to go much longer than an hour here, but I want to look and see what signs you could be dealing with. Hold on while I take these out. Okay, sorry, I just didn't want all that loud noise because I don't know... Oh, wait, let me see. There we go. I had to get a little mouse pad because it was so loud hitting my table. Okay. Dates and signs. Okay. Could be dealing with a Scorpio, a Gemini a Pisces or a Cancer. Wow. Three water signs. Okay. So somebody was born on the 26th, 29th, 25th, 28th. Okay. November 5th, um, 9th, um, 8th, 2nd, 5th. Okay, we've got the 11-11, so we have a November 12th here. We also have somebody birthday on the 16th, and also somebody's 55, somebody's 58, um, somebody born in 1965. I'm also picking up a February, February 8th. I'm hearing February 8th, 1955, I think. Okay. Let's get back into the signs here. And August 16th, they just said. All right, signs showing up for Virgo. Okay, Aquarius, Aries, Taurus, and Scorpio again. Okay. So if I call one sign three times, it's definitely for you. That resonates for you. Okay, Scorpio, uh, Aries, Cancer, and Capricorn. Okay, so those are the signs. If you don't hear the person's sign, it doesn't mean it's not for you. Just keep that in mind. And let's get some more numbers. Okay, February 12th, 14th. 
Okay, 96 was a big year. Um, September 3rd. Mm, September 14th. 2012, big year. Um, 1962, 1979, 1978, somebody is 58, 51, um, somebody is 36. So when I say is, either already turned or will be this year, um, 31, someone's 34, 32, uh, somebody's 41, 46, 49, and 42. Okay. One more set of numbers. Actually, I'm going to stop the numbers and I'm just going to give you your charms. Okay. Well, you got the spider again. Be careful getting stuck in the spider's web or maybe you're seeing spiders around you. I had a spider crawling on me today and it was very, very teeny and very, very quick. And I just kind of was like, I just let it do its thing. Um, we have a cherry. So um, the word cherry would resonate for you in some way or you're eating cherries um, or you love cherries. Okay, something or somebody's name might be Cherry or Sherry or Cherie. Um, Okay, you also have a cross, looks like a Christian, it's a Christian symbol cross. It's weird, I got a really weird vibe from that cross when I looked at it. Um, there, it's weird. Um, I'm seeing a caterpillar in this cross. I don't know why. I'm just seeing a caterpillar in this. They're showing me a caterpillar in this cross. There's nothing on the cross at all. It's just, um, I know you really can't see it, but it's just a very basic looking cross. See, it's nothing special about this, but I was seeing a caterpillar with that. So I don't know what a caterpillar would mean or if the caterpillar, something resonates with you about a caterpillar. Um, and you also have, we have an American flag here. So maybe somebody's very patriotic. Maybe somebody's, um, somebody is a Make America Great Again fan. <clears throat> um, the funny thing is, is that there's one, two, so this looks like a Confederate flag. Well, it doesn't, but it, I don't know if it's Confederate. It's a flag that didn't have all the state stars on it. It only had like the 13 colonies, I think. So it's a, an old historical flag. Maybe somebody has a flag like that. You know, it's not, it, it's like 13 stripes and 13 stars, I guess. Um, there's something like that. Uh, isn't it horrible um, that I'm from the U.S. and I can't remember my American history? Um, it doesn't matter because I'm just, I'm seeing very, it's not as many stars are currently on the American flag. So somebody might have a flag that has, you know, um, American flag of some sort. That's what I'm going to say. But I don't feel like it's like all the stars on the flag. Um, and... I think my music stopped. I'm so upset. Um, so yeah, there's a rose also. And I feel like, didn't you have a rose yesterday? I think yesterday there was a rose in the reading. So this same energy with that rose, you're somebody you're going to see um, all of a sudden. Now, within this week, I think, I feel like within even the next couple of days, you're going to spot a rose, like a beautiful red rose. And for some of you, a red tulip actually a red tulip there's some so so what i was getting at they were telling me is that you're, you're just going to see the rarest it's either the rarest flower 
in a place you didn't expect to see one. Okay. So it's not that it's a rare flower because a red rose and a red tulip is not a rare flower. It's just that it's going to seem like it's rare because it's going to be sprouting up in an area by itself where you don't expect to see something like that, okay? And I'm not sure exactly what they mean, but I think you will when it happens. You'll notice it and when you think about it, it might be near a cherry tree. When you think about it, after hearing this message, I feel like come back and listen to this reading again because you may need to hear it more than once. Okay, you might just see it somewhere or it might be like in the back seat of your car and you're like, where the heck did that come from? It doesn't even have to be growing up out of the seat. It's just there. Somehow, some way, you're just gonna see a, a flower in the weirdest spot. And it could be a rose or it could be tulips or something like that where it's just completely unexpected. All right, you guys, that's gonna be it for your reading. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm gonna upload this now. Just remember there's no extended reading for this reading because I think it was pretty straightforward um, but I'll be back tomorrow night um, I was going to do the podcast tomorrow night I'm not exactly sure what the topic's going to be so um, if you have any ideas for topics while you're listening here in the chat feel free to plug them in or if you want to leave them in the comments any topic ideas and um, if something really rings a bell for me then I'll definitely think about using one of the topics that you suggest all right, you guys, so have a great evening. Thanks for being here. Thanks to everybody in the chat. Shout out to the mods, and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, take care. Bye.